Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today we have another viewer request video. Uh, this is the week of viewer requests, I guess, where I'm going to show you how you can write a DAG that will migrate your tables from an MS SQL database into a Snowflake database. And I will be honest, MS SQL is the biggest headache to work with of all time. Um, but it can be done. Uh, and I have a previous video that I will put a link to in the description. If you want to see all the different setup processes you need to go through to actually have MS SQL work, uh, you can go refer to that to actually get the connection set up. Um, but because it's such a long process, I'm not going to go through it again in the, this video today, even though it gave me some juicy, juicy watch time. Um, so please go check that video out. If you need to go to the nitty gritty, I'll go high level what you need to do. Um, but really just going to focus on the process of actually, you know, building a, uh, extraction to bring all of our data from uh, an ms sql database um, into a snowflake database and how we're going to use it dynamically we're going to do it dynamically um, so we're actually going to be using uh, the ms sql operator kind of um, so because ms sql is so weird you can't really actually use the ms sql operator as far as i can tell what you have to do is actually use an odbc uh, hook into it so uh, what you'll see here is you have the odbc uh, hook here to use it, you'll need to import, you know, the ODBC hook from Airflow providers, um, pip install it or add it to your requirements file in your uh, Astro uh, local or Airflow local installation um, and install it that way. And so we'll be using this and then the Astro SDK uh, merge function. So what this will allow us to do is instead of needing to transfer the data into an intermediary location, a staging database before we upload it into Snowflake. This will allow us to directly transfer um, our data from that SQL database directly into a Snowflake database. Um, so super useful function here that just you know eliminates the kind of need to middle around with XCOMs and all that um, and just do the natural thing, which is just transfer directly into uh, our database. So we'll do now is switch over into the code view and I'll show you how to build this. Um, so before we actually get started building our DAG, you're going to have a lot of things you're going to need to install. Um, and some of them might not be that intuitive. So number one, you will need your ODBC driver. Um, you'll need to have the Snowflake provider installed, uh, the Astro SDK as well. So we'll add that as here. Um, and then I'm running this locally using the uh, Astro CLI. You don't have to be, all this is open source. Um, but one thing that you will likely need to use is an older version of Airflow to actually be able to run MS SQL. I've noticed with the more recent versions, because the version of Python has been upgraded, um, it no longer really works. However, you can set the Python version for your Airflow environment if you're using uh, Astro by just going, you know, Python 3.8 um, and setting it that way. Because I already have this set up to work, um, and it is incredibly finicky. I'm just going to use the environment I already have built, but that's how you would want to do it uh, if you're doing it yourself. And then again, you can go through, it's on my GitHub as well, um, astronaut Yates, where you can download this command, but we're basically installing a bunch of different packages um, from Microsoft directly because they aren't accessible. Otherwise, again, I, the, and connecting to MS SQL is like a exercise in just pain. Um, but you inst app install a bunch of different uh, software. You can obviously just exec into your container as well and install these. Um, but we're going to curl just a bunch uh, Debian, ODBC drivers. Um, everything we'll need to actually connect to an ODBC database. You can see pip install MS SQL via here. So that's why it's not, or I didn't have it in my requirements file. And then you're also going to need to install the ODBC drivers, which you're doing there, um, MS SQL importing the MS SQL operator. So this means that we're not actually going to need to add it in a requirements file. We're going to just add it via this Docker file. Um, and yeah, I know it's unintuitive, but it's just kind of what you need to do. It's I, I hate it as much as you do. I promise you. And so here in our packet or in our package imports in our DAG, so just create a fresh DAG file, migration DAG. Um, you'll also need to uh, import the ODBC driver. So I forgot to add these. Um, oh, actually, no, I did add these. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry. I don't know. I'm having a little flash there. Uh, so you'll need to import, obviously, Snowflake operator, table emerge from the Astro SDK, uh, pendulum daytime just for proper daytime, and then obviously DAG as well. I don't know why pendulum daytime's in there twice. Um, getting sloppy today, I guess. So after that, what we're going to do, and this is kind of what I did that was a little funky. So you might, if you don't want to, if you're having issues with the ODBC connection, um, 
you don't need to do this step. You'll just need to manually create your tables within Snowflake. But what I did here was add a step that I thought might be useful for migration, where in, instead of you needing to actually create all those within Snowflake and then point, um, you know, it's just double work, basically. We're creating all the corresponding tables within uh, from MS SQL into Snowflake. So what I thought would be helpful is if, hey, why don't we have a task that dynamically reads in all the tables within your MS SQL environment, then creates tables within them in Snowflake. And so you can see here, that's what we're using the ODBC hook to do. So we're using our MS SQL connection. We're using our ODBC hook here to get records, um, figure out whatever columns are there, uh, you know, check, check, take all the rows. So select column name, data type from all, uh, from that schema, of the table, which we'll, I'll show you how we're feeding in in a second, and then return a create statement that will create a table within Snowflake um, that corresponds in terms of schema to MS SQL. So just a neat little thing there. You don't have to do that, but I thought it would be useful. Then here we have tables. So just a list of whatever tables you're gonna be transferring between two databases. Default arg, so owner, start date, um, just to keep them separate. And then we'll create a DAG. So MS SQL is Snowflake, uh, default args, default args, schedule interval equals none, because you're probably just going to use this once, right? You're not going to be constantly uh, migrating data unless maybe you want to, in which case, schedule two every day. The choice is all yours. Um, so now that we've got our DAG object, we'll do another thing that's fun, which is use uh, dynamic task groups. So here, for every table in tables, we are going to, and this is going to have the effect of looping, creating tasks dynamically for us. Um, so here we have create tables. Um, so here, task ID, F, create table in Snowflake, Snowflake operator. And here we're referencing that uh, create table Python function, feeding it the table from our loop for all of our tables in this array, and then using that to create a corresponding table within Snowflake relative to the one within MS SQL. Um, so this is just a step I came up with to hopefully save you some time. You don't need it at all. Uh, if you wanted to cut it out, you could just you know remove this step and just only use this task loop in which the only next step we'll really need to do is, is just the AQL merge function. So the Astro SDK is compatible with MS SQL um, and MySQL, so you should be able to use this. Um, I tested this with just a local installation, so that might remove a lot of the barriers, but it works. Um, and so here we have a source table where we're connecting to our uh, SQL Server database, uh, MS SQL. And then we are uh, setting a destination table, which is our Snowflake database. You'll set your Snowflake connection via the UI. Um, and then what we'll do in upload is just set a use the uh, Astro SDK merge function to merge the source table and the destination table. And what the merge function does, we'll just bring in any data, data from the source table into the destination table. Um, and if there's any duplicates, I'll just overwrite those, but you can change that behavior uh, via flag on that. So you're not restricted to just uh, the overwrite behavior using the merge function. And then if you don't wanna use the Astro SDK for whatever reason, there is another way you could kind of do this. Um, so here, what you would do is instead of using this kind of fancy, I got a little fun with it because I thought this might be an interesting way to do it, but you could also do it a little bit more boring where what you can do here is just use the MS SQL operator. Um, and so the reason I use the ODBC hook is because the MS SQL operator is incredibly hard to get cooperative. Um, it just like doesn't take connection strings properly. So the ODBC hook is a little more reliable. So it's just generic. Um, but what you could do here is similarly for every table, extract, select all using the MS SQL operator, and then reference your, um, which you could just reference the create a uh, table that it's extracted from a SQL, um, create a table within Snowflake. And this is where you might need to just create um, a list of tables. So by default, this is just gonna cycle through the list and just create empty tables that don't have any schema. So you could theoretically, and like this obviously isn't best practices, but you know, if you upload data into a Snowflake table that doesn't have a schema def or columns defined, you can define it to actually read that in, interpret the columns um, on creation. So you don't have to define the schema manually. Um, so here you just you know, create table, table, and then insert into table um, values from, and then here you could, right, let's say uh, extract. Um, and yeah, this is where you could, you know, basically use XCOMs to pass data directly from the extract MS SQL task into uh, your Snowflake operator. And so in terms of 
other things you need to do to actually have this run. You'll just need to have a Snowflake connection. Um, so here, Snowflake, uh, call it Snowflake default. And then you just need your uh, whatever schema you're using. So public, uh, login, password, your account name, and make sure you do org. So you're gonna now have to do org account name for this. And then you'll put in your database, DB, um, and then your region is no longer necessary, but your role is more necessary in my, in my experience. Um, so just something to note, Snowflake, I guess, kind of changed it up. And then, so in terms of connecting, the reason I brought this up uh, instead of the, actually the Airflow connection screen is just so I can kind of explain what you need here and what you might not. Um, so your host, you're definitely going to need your schema, even though this is optional, you're definitely going to need uh, it doesn't really infer schema well for MS SQL. Login name, password required, port, port, definitely required. You're probably gonna need some extra parameters. And so if you go on my, and so if the MS SQL do, route doesn't work for you, another option is swapping out the parts that use it to just use a direct PyODBC connection where you just read in your uh, information dynamically. So here, you know, you have to set your username, passwords. You can see I set it like that and then generate them at runtime because again, the MS SQL actual like default connection is incredibly finicky and doesn't work. And so here you would just replace, so in my migration DAG, um, you would replace this ODBC hook um, and instead just hook in using PyODBC uh, and then execute a query. Uh, so basically just kind of wrap this in a query format um, and have it be two lines. And then you would just PyODBC connect to MS SQL here um, instead of using it from the UI. And so, yeah, right, instead of here. Um, and yeah, that is all I have for you today. So please go check it out. Um, I hope this helped the user that uh, actually requested this. Um, if anything's unclear, if you have any issues, please hit me up uh, and let's work through them together. Uh, and if you have any other examples or use cases you'd like me to go through, hit me up and I will add it to the schedule. So have a good one. Data guy out.